Hi, this is Holly of Holly's Soap Making. In this video, I'll show you how I made my entry soap for the Soap Challenge Club's Back to Basics Challenge. The main goal was to create a completely smooth soap with no bubbles, glycerin rivers, or rough texture. The secondary goal was to match a color palette that was provided to us. I'll go through all the steps I took to make the soap as smooth as possible and how I tried my best to match the colors using mostly natural colorants. You'll find all the links and information listed in the description box below, and if you're interested in the recipe I used, I'll list it at the end of the video entered into a soap calculator. Be sure to protect your skin and eyes when making soap, and if you're a beginner or interested in soap making, I always provide links to basic soap making videos and articles in the description box below. I prepared eight different colorants, mixing each with either oil or water. The activated charcoal, indigo, and woad were mixed with sunflower oil, while the clays and titanium dioxide were all mixed with distilled water. As I mentioned earlier, the main goal for this challenge was to create a smooth soap with no bubbles, so when I weighed out the oils, I was very careful to pour them onto a spoon. When you pour an oil or soap into a container or mold, turbulence can be created at the surface, which causes a lot of very small bubbles to form that are really hard to remove. By pouring on a slant, the liquid slows down and enters at an angle, reducing the chances of turbulence. Another way bubbles get introduced to soap is during blending. I tapped the blender bell to remove any trapped air, then kept the blender straight up and deep in the bowl to prevent air from being drawn down into the soap. I blended the soap just to an emulsion and then divided it into six equal parts, which ended up being about one cup each. To make the black soap, I added one teaspoon of the charcoal oil to one cup of soap. For each of these colors, I used my small hand blender to make sure they were mixed in well. As I was blending, I watched to make sure it wasn't pulling air down into the soap. 
If I notice the surface of this oak begin to open up and form a funnel around the blender shaft, I stopped for a second and stirred by hand. For the dark blue colored soap, I added about one quarter teaspoon of the indigo oil to one cup of soap. To try and match the dark blue in the Soap Challenge color palette, I also added a little woad oil. However, as you'll see from the finished soap, I don't think it really helped at all, and I could have just used the indigo by itself. For the light blue soap, I used about 1 8 teaspoon indigo oil added to 1 cup of soap. To make the orange soap, I used a mixture of 1 half teaspoon orange clay plus a few drops of the red clay. For the yellow soap, I used about one quarter teaspoon of the yellow clay and just a few drops of the green clay. Finally, to make the white soap, I used one half teaspoon of the titanium dioxide added to one cup of soap. I like to pour off a little soap and add the titanium dioxide to that. This allows me to blend as much as needed to prevent any white specks in the finished soap without accelerating trace in the entire cup of soap. I wanted to use a pouring technique that I knew would give me a smooth soap, so I chose to do a diagonal pour down the side of a tilted mold. I was really hoping for a slanted tiger stripe design, but my clay and titanium dioxide colored soap started to thicken up on me, while the charcoal and indigo soaps did not, so as you'll see, I ended up with a very different pattern than I intended. I did oven process the soap so the colors would be as vibrant as possible. Since I used a water discount with this soap and also soaped at a lower temperature, I wasn't too worried about glycerin rivers forming. 
If you do soap at warmer temperatures or use a higher water amount, you could possibly skip the oven process and still achieve gel. It's really something you have to experiment with to know what works in your environment and with your particular recipe. I removed the soap 48 hours later, then waited another 24 hours to unmold and cut it. I initially tried cutting the soap with a knife since that usually gives me a smoother surface, but after the first cut I gave up on being able to make straight cuts and switched to my wire cutter instead. I made sure the wire was really tight and it actually did a good job. As you can see, the design is more of a camo pattern than the tiger stripe I intended to make, but I still really liked it and was pleased with the smoothness of the soap and the crisp lines between the colors. I made two more soaps for this challenge, but I felt that this one fit the requirements the best. I'll still probably post videos of the others in the next couple of weeks. Since this was a cold process soap, I made sure the type of lye was set to sodium hydroxide, or NaOH. My recipe oil weight was 1100 grams. My lye concentration was 35%, which means my lye solution consisted of 35% sodium hydroxide and 65% water. I left the super fat at 5%, and my fragrance usage rate was 30 grams per kilogram. This recipe does contain lard, so I'll provide an alternative lard-free recipe that I really like following this one. Once you have all of your ingredients listed, you just select to calculate the recipe, then to view or print it. Soap Calc will give you a really nice listing of your recipe, including the amount of sodium hydroxide required to saponify your oils. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found something useful here to help you in your soap making. 